opening of the gates in the city she utters her words saying how long how long ye simple ones will ye love simplicity and the scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge oh I'm reminded by the things that are posted on Facebook I have posted some things too in regards to situations that is taking place in the world today such as racism among us, among the whites of this nation and blacks of this nation. Racism affects all human beings. But we must wine, be wise and be guard your mind and your heart against evil like that. Racism is an evil. It is a, a something that has affected America from its very beginning. It's hatred of white people or black people. Black people hating white people. Jews hating Gentiles, Gentiles hating Jews. Oh, man. Let's remember also there's only two types of people, regardless of the colors of skins and what we call each other. But they are nothing but Gentiles and Jews who God made. All right. Verses 32 through 33. For the turning away of simple shall slay them and the prosperity of food shall destroy them. Oh, oh, have mercy. I look at the men and women in black and whites and different colors running out of stores with the loot in their hand, putting them in cars and in baskets and going away. Lord, have mercy. The times that we live in, we are listening and watching the birthing pains of change, as Grandmama used to say, God will soon be returning. Get yourself ready. Get your house in order. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. Oh, but whosoever hearken unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. Oh, man. Oh, man. Lord have mercy. Powerful words indeed. Powerful words indeed. Our printed text. Our printed text which we just got through doing today. We hope that it was a, a blessing to you. Proverbs 1 verses 1 through 4, 7 and 8, 10, 20 through 22, 32 to 33, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to whom wisdom and instruction is perceived, the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. Listen up. Listen to God's wisdom. Listen to God's wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. All powerful, all so powerful. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Your mothers and your fathers give you instructions every day. My father gave me instructions every day. I remember a mindful of some of the disobedient things that I did. And one of the things that my father would do, he would allow us to go out and um, socialize and be with other people. But he had a curfew time, which time you were to be back in the house and in your bed and in the safety of the home. And he was set that time. And I was rebellious. I was the one always breaking that curfew. And he knew that I was the one that would be breaking that father. At curfew, when I be coming in at night, uh, he would say, "I would hear him call out, call out." I know who that is. I know who that is. He was talking to me, the rebellious one. I know who that is. I am tired right now, but I will get you in the morning. And just like clockwork, I had been out doing things and was tired. And when I laid down and went to sleep, I went soundly asleep. And my father would wake me up with punishment for breaking the curfew. Lord have mercy. Discipline. 
just like clockwork, he disciplined me for being uh, uh, breaking the curfew and with the instruction which he, his, he, my father, had given me. That is the same thing that is happening today in people's lives right now, in children, in young people's lives, in old people's lives. They are being disobedient to the instruction of Jesus Christ's word, the instruction of the Bible, the instruction of your pastor, the instructions of your deacon, the instructions of your mother, the instructions of your father. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If people that are doing wrong try to entice you, do not buy into that. Don't go with them. Don't do what they are doing. Do not do that. You need to have Jesus Christ inside of you to repel what Satan, that's Satan the deceiver, doing that. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Wisdom cries out. She utters her voice in the street. Wisdom is crying out, trying to tell you what is right. Listen. She cries in the chief places of the concourse. Concourses, that's about like on streets, around corners, in houses, in buildings, uh, in the openings of the gate, at the gate, when you go out your door, when you come into the door, at the courthouse, different places. Wisdom is crying out to you, telling you, don't do this, do that, do that, don't say this, act this way, act this way. When someone do wrong and do wrong to you, don't return that with wrong. Remember, the, uh, one of Jesus' disciples cut off the ear of one of the people that came to arrest Jesus. And what did he say? You live by the sword, you will die by the sword. She cries in the creek. Just remember, those folks that are out there shooting and killing and breaking in and burning, they living by that, they will surely die by that. God's word says that. How long, you simple ones? How long? He's calling you simple if you don't know you doing what the, uh, the evil people want you to do. They cut that Satan. That's death. The wedges of sin is death. How long, you simple ones, will ye love simplicity? Simplicity. And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Fools hate knowledge. Look at that. Scorners. Have you ever listened on Facebook and listened on Facebook and written to Facebook and listened to people talk and how they down talk other leaders about they ain't did nothing? Remember how they talk about President Barack Obama ain't did nothing for black folks and all this kind of stuff like that? Lord have mercy. God give you a mind and a wisdom with senses, with hands and feet and ears and legs and things to do for yourself. Get up, because God has given all you need. He's telling you right now, listen to God's wisdom. You want to know how to earn and get money and be profitable, raise your family? God is telling you how to do it. Don't be no fool. Listen to other folks say this and that. They are the same people like that was among the people that was when they were traveling out of Egypt and going to the promised land. God killed them all off because they were rebellious. They were scoffers. They delighted in scorning. They talked about Moses. They, oh, God does not like that. Rebellion is evil. Rebellion is evil. Disobeying is evil. It is better to obey. God will take care of the rest if they're wronging you and what they're doing to you. Just like the policeman that had his knee on uh, Floyd's neck. God's going to take care of it. Oh, don't go out and be looting and burning and cussing and going on. They were doing the same thing down there in Monroe Oval just days ago. Supposedly um, uh, um, uh, going against what the policeman had did to Paul, to uh, Floyd. Lord have mercy. Oh, what is the cussing all about? What is that? All right. For the returning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of food shall destroy them. You running after and stealing different stuff, that stuff will destroy you. Thieves, liars. Oh, but whosoever hearken to me shall dwell safely, and he shall be quiet from the fear of evil. Oh, man. Powerful words. 
The lesson in context. The books of Proverbs is the third of five books of the Old Testament and often called wisdom literature. This group also includes Job, Psalms, Ecclesiastes, and the Songs of Solomon. When most people think of Proverbs in a June, not just as the biblical one, they probably call to the mind piety statements of truth that are good general advice for navigating lives. Haste make waste, and he who hesitates is lost, a general tr true statement, but one can be can see how these statements might contradict each other. The wisdom of each other's saying is situational. Situational. Biblical prophets, biblical prophets are as well, though they are more than just good advice. They are godly advice based on crucial premises that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Remember Proverbs 9 and 10? That is the foundation of wisdom, to fear God, to fear God. Keeping the premise that in mind helps the wise person discern when a certain course of conventional wisdom might not be the best for obeying God's laws. Knowing God's use the wisdom to decide well. How about that? Knowing God gives you the wisdom to decide well what is best for you. All right? The book of Proverbs divides itself in three major sections. Number one, long a long introduction to the collection of Proverbs, chapters 1 through 9. The collection of, of acoustic conclusions. Um, yes. And there are six collections, Proverbs, Solomon, 10, Words of wise, words of the wise, words of Solomon, words of Agur, and words of King Lemuel. The four lessons in this unit are driven from the nine opening chapters of Proverbs 1 through 9 that exalt the orders to choose to live by God's wisdom. Live by God's wisdom, not man's wisdom. Live by God's wisdom and not man. In these chapters, we find more association between the individual proverb that the more randomized saying that appear from chapters 10 forward. Most scholars see 10 fatherly appeal of lecture in chapters 1 through 9. Our text concludes part of the first appeal. Powerful words indeed. Powerful words indeed. All right. To know wisdom and instruction. Um, to know wisdom. The Proverbs of Solomon, David, king of Israel. King Solomon, he wanted wisdom, how to, how to manage and rule God's people. God gave him abundance of wisdom. He asked God for that. God would do you the same today. Ask God for wisdom and how you do Want to raise your children right? Ask God. Want to teach your children? Ask God. You want to earn money for your family? Ask God. He will show you how. He will tell you how. Want a good job? Ask God. Pray for God. Ask God's guidance in seeking that good job that will sustain you through all situations and won't be laid off and saying like that. God will give you that. To know wisdom and structure. To know wisdom. To receive the words of understanding. Words of understanding must become more than just theory and good advice. They must be personally embraced and applied in order to be genuinely valued. Oh, thou shalt not steal. Listen to that. Thou shalt not steal. That means do not steal. Thou shalt not steal. They must be personally embraced and applied in order to be genuinely of value. Otherwise, they are not really perceived. To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. Instruction is repeated to emphasize the importance. Proverbs 1, 2, the words translated wisdom, a different Hebrew word from one previous translated this way, emphasizes, emphasizes discernment. In other words, you see something and the words are spoken, you got to get into it. You got to meditate on it. You got to understand it. You got to Dig into it. You just can't go surface over it and let it go. Thou shall not steal. That means do not steal. You can steal by going taking something. You can steal something that's in your 
uh, tear the take and you go take it. That's